Go ahead. There's no children, so no children moments. Our second scripture reading is in Revelation chapter 21, and it's verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heavens from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. He, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from every eye. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one and I, and the one who was seated at the throne said, See, I'm making all things new. Also he said this, Write down these words, for they are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Continuing or concluding the, the series this morning on because of the resurrection, we're still in the Easter season, and we're concluding the series because of the resurrection with the sermon, uh, We Can Have Hope. Because of the resurrection, we can have hope. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, ask God to speak to us uh, through the word today. God, we thank you for each one that's here today. Thank you for the songs, the messages in them, for the prayers, for the the scriptures that have been read. And now, Lord, as we look into your word, we pray that you open our hearts, our minds, and our ears. Give us understanding. Help us to get from your word what you have for us today so that we can be filled with hope, so that we can, can live uh, closer to you as we go forth, so that we can better represent you as we go forth in a world that very much needs to, to see uh, the hope that is in you. So, so speak through me today. Let me be your mouthpiece. Uh, share the things you have to share the ways you have to share them. For it's just that we pray. Amen. Amen. There's a movie that came out now several years ago uh, called Signs, uh, starring Mel Gibson. Anybody saw that? See that one? A few of you? Okay. One of the co-stars was King Phoenix before he did Walk the Line, and, and everybody really found out who he was. He was kind of a, one of the uh, unknown uh, actors at the time, I think, that Signs was done, probably. Uh, and, but he became very popular a little later. In my opinion, it's an excellent movie. It's about a failed alien invasion, if you like that type of thing. But, but what's good to me for is because of the, uh, the underlying story that's there. Um, it was, it's about a failed invasion, so it's, a, it's rated PG-13 because it might be scary to smaller children and things like that. But it, it's, a, it's about crop circles that begin to appear. You know, we always hear about those things. And so it's about that all over the world that turns out to be where spaceships have landed leading up to an invasion. The real message of the story, though, unfolds as we begin to learn uh, through flashbacks about things that, that led up to where they're at this time, as we, as we, watch, and we watch the characters work through their grief. Uh, we learn that Mel Gibson was pre, has previously been an Episcopalian priest, uh, and, but has left the ministry after his wife was tragically killed when a truck pinned her to a tree while she was out for a walk. As I, as I remember, I think that's how the story went. Mel Gibson's character came upon the wreck and got there just in time to learn that there was nothing they could do. If they pulled the truck back, she's going to die and, and, all, and all this. And all he could do was talk to her as she died and be with her while she died. Gibson has since left the ministry, has to a large degree lost his faith, as the story unfolds and, and has lost hope 
and, and in very way, many ways is very bitter. He has two small children at home, one of which has severe asthma, which becomes very significant as the story unfolds, and a brother, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, who has come to live with him. As it becomes evident that they are indeed in the middle of an alien invasion, and, and, the, and the family is sitting on a couch in their family room after boarding up the house, boarding up the windows and all this stuff, Joaquin, seeking comfort, says, do you think this is the end of the world? So watch this clip here as they discuss that. Some people are going to get the world. That's true. Do you think it could be? Yes. How can you say that? I wasn't here to do one. Can you pretend to be like you used to be? Give us some comfort. At the time of this conversation, Gibson has lost hope and is, the, is in the group without hope, probably. So he's trying to recall how he would answer that question, how he would have answered that question before. So, but as the story unfolds, Gibson's faith is restored. And at the end, end he's shown putting on his clerical shirt to go out and, and re resuming his pastoral calling. It's a story of pain, loss of hope, hope restored, and delivery. The book of Revelations is a story of a people in loss of hope and pain. You know, we've been talking about that the last few weeks. It's a it's crisis literature written to restore that lost hope for them. It does that by offering a vision of what God is doing on their behalf in the world now, but also in the world to come. I told you that one interpretation of how Revelation does this is by offering a bifurcated worldview. Using this method of interpretation, a couple weeks ago we walked through the opening of the scrolls and the seals and saw how John moved through the realities that they could see around them to a vision of the reality of what the Lamb who was slain wanted to do and was doing to bring peace in this world and the other worldly reality of which they were also a citizen as Christians. One could say that Revelation offers glimpses into heaven. One theological understanding that we struggle with is, and I've heard have people ask me a lot of times in times of loss, is what happens to the dead in Christ? 
Do they sleep for a while until the judgment, or do they go? Do they go directly to heaven? You know, I suppose we won't know the definite answers to that question until we find ourselves on the other side of eternity. But Revelation, for me, seems to support the belief that we go directly to that other reality. John sees the dead under the altar. And, and he sees Christians from all nations in white robes worshiping and praising the Lamb. You know, this otherworldly reality that he has a glimpse into as he writes about in Revelation. When our scripture for today, John sees the new Jerusalem coming down. At the time Revelations was written, Jerusalem had been destroyed by Rome. For them, this could have been seen as a, a righting of the wrongs that the Roman Empire had done. You know, a fixing of things. They could have seen it as a vision into restoration of Jerusalem, which has since taken place. They would have seen it as a hope that as we serve the lamb that was slain, who conquers another way, we talked about that, that, that Jesus conquered not with a sword, but he conquered another way. God's kingdom can come on earth. As, they, as we serve the Lamb who conquers another way, God's kingdom can come on, on, on earth. Things can be made right again. You know, we can see there's assurance of that. It would, it would have given them hope that serving the Lamb makes a difference in this life. You know, it's not just for later that makes a difference in this life. You know, I think it's important for us to see that. You know, so many people just live, this, this, there's no hope for this life, no hope, and just live waiting for the end. But, but for Revelation, for John's Revelation, there's hope for this life. Serving the Lamb makes a difference today. John says in, in John 10.10, 10, uh, Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. This comes from some of the same understanding. It comes from the, we believe, the same author. The same, same understanding that, that John has in Revelation. Because of the resurrection, we can have hope of an abundant life in the Spirit today. Serving God makes a difference today. We can have hope that as we live for the Lamb who was slain and as we bring others to do the same, life can be better on earth. It does make a difference how we live. We can make a difference all these things are, are part of what Revelation is trying to tell them and trying to tell us. We can, we, can, we can make a difference. There is hope also within this that as the world around us rages, we do not have to lose hope. You know, there's something, God's doing something um, that we don't see. You know, it's like the little clip showed, you know, people that are on that one group, when they see all this stuff happening, they see signs and they, there's still hope that there's someone out there that's making a difference, that's doing something with all this. You know, and I hope that we are some of those people and we're not the ones that lose hope. Revelation gives us that opportunity to be those people. We know that someone's in control and is working to make all things work together for our good. In the bigger picture, we are on the winning side. Some have said, and I, I think that's also a theme of Revelation, we are on the winning side. You know, we are, God has already won the war. We are on the winning side. The worst thing this world can do to us is to kill us, which brings us to our second hope, which Revelation also addresses. In this glimpse into the otherworldly reality, John sees a vision of a place where God is reigning, where God will dwell with us as, as our God, where God will wipe every tear from our eyes, where death will be no more, where mourning and crying and pain will be no more because these things will be no more. Paul says in one of his writings, if this world were all there is, I would be of all people most miserable. But he had the hope that this life is not all there is. That's why he says that. Because this life's not all there is. John affirms that here. Because of the resurrection, we can have hope of a new life after this life is through. Where there's not going to be pain or hurt or crying anymore. Praise the Lord. You know, so, so Revelation gives us this reality. Because of the resurrection, the resurrection makes so much difference. Because of the resurrection, we can have hope. 
You know, this concludes our series on because of the resurrection, but we go on living in reality that because of the resurrection, we can be free. We talked about that the first sermon. Because of the resurrection, we can have purpose. Because of the resurrection, we can have peace. And because of the resurrection, we can have hope. The resurrection makes a difference. Are you indeed free? Do you feel that purpose in Christ? Are you at peace? Which kind of person are you? Are you one when the world throws you a curve, you still have hope? Or do you find yourself in despair and thinking it's useless? Nothing makes a difference. We're all, we're all doomed. We're all going to hell in a, in a paper basket, so to, say, so to speak. The world's going to hell in a paper basket. Do you lose hope? Or do you feel like that, that when the world throws you a curve, you still have hope? Do you see signs that God is working in the midst of it all? Do you look for that? You can claim that freedom and purpose today. You can find that peace and hope in Christ. Because of the resurrection, you can begin a journey with God where all this can be a part of that journey. So in concluding today, as we encounter Christ at the table, I want to ask you, before or after, whenever it seems to work for you, you take before or after you take communion, to bow for a silent time of prayer. You can do that up here. You can go back to your seat and do it. I want to ask you to, uh, to pray. Come to the one who can make you free, who can give you purpose, and who can give you peace, and who can give you hope. If you make a first-time commitment today, let me know so I can help you with your new walk in Christ. Let's pray. <coughs> God, we thank you for the assurances of the revelation of John that because of the resurrection, we can be free, we can have, we can have peace, we can have hope, that it does make a difference, that you make a difference because of the resurrection we can, we can live for you in this life and make a difference and have hope that your kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven and that, that this life is not all there is. When you get done with us here, that we have the hope of an eternal life with you. So, so thank you for your word, for your vision to, to, to John as we have, have looked into a few glimpses of it this, these last few weeks. <laughs> Help us to forgive us for the times that we have lost hope, that we have felt despair, and we have kind of felt like just giving up. Forgive us for that and help us to, to encounter you today and to be, have that hope renewed in you, that you do make a difference, that because of the resurrection we can have hope, and that you are doing something in our world, and that you are using us to make a positive difference in our community, in our world, and to live in the assurance that whatever happens, you are there and you are taking care of us. Help us to be, be able to pass that on to others that we know and to, to be a bright light as, as people meet us through the week. Help us to, when they encounter us, that their day's a little brighter and that they've got a little bit of hope because that hope has bubbled over from us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the Lord's table. It's not the United Methodist table. If God's speaking to you, you're invited to take with us. Whether you're young or old, uh, member of this church or not, uh, you're invited to partake if God's speaking to you. We believe that and we pray for an encounter with Christ as we take communion to meet whatever needs that we have today. Maybe your need is to become a Christian, and we believe that can happen spiritually as you take communion. That's what you're open to and you're wanting to happen as you encounter Christ at the table. But for all of us, whatever needs we come to, we expect Christ to meet those and to meet us there and to, to make a difference. And so when we pray for that. So Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another.
Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. Then to the great thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of fire and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous life. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, broke it, and blessed it, said, Take eat, this is my body, it's good for you. As often as you take it, take your merits to me. The bread is under the little clear wrap on top, here as you, as you're sort of communion. As you take the bread, remember Christ's life. As you look at the bread and you're about to take it, remember Christ's life, uh, that he lived among us, that vessel in which God came incarnate in to live among us and how he lived. Remember that as you take the cup. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and blessed it and said, gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, this is my blood and new covenant for, us, for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink it, drink it from remembrance of me, of me. So as you're taking the cup, remember, that God did for us what we can't do for ourselves in, in giving Christ for us. God made a way for us to be forgiving, justified, washed, washed as white as snow, our sins blotted out, and to have a new chance to live for God and to, to live in the hope of the resurrection. So as you take the little cup, remember that. On the day uh, you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and in with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. again. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit and us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Be, pre be present at our table, Lord. Let, let this be an encounter with your spirit and ours to meet whatever needs are here today, so that we can go forth and better live for you and better live in the hope that you give us in the resurrection. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world.
So Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and, and with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as children of God, let's pray the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 